Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Benhaj, founder and creator of Aldiba Contemporary Art. I'm very happy to welcome you today and the fourth episode of the Issue 6 magazine with the outstanding photographers because this, this episode is dedicated to photography. What attracted me as a creator in these photographers is the way they represent architecture, physics, and society, sort of how we perceive things before, how we documented the history, and how we project it on the future. So no more talks, let's meet the artists. Hello everyone, welcome to the issue six, episode four, dedicated to photography. And this evening I'm inviting the three outstanding photographers based actually in Spain, England. Hi, everyone. Hi, thank you for inviting Welcome. us. Thank Welcome. you. So here uh, we are going to showcase the articles on the print magazine of the issue six and give to this outstanding artist the opportunity to talk about their work and to share with you their vision. The look of the first and the cover magazine of issue six. Here we go now briefly to introduce the Belgium artist Peter Chinitor Tazurian. And what I like personally about his work is how photographers can redefine the space according to what they, uh, what documentation is used to be, uh, or how they used to, or human how used to document in spaces through like photographs or through um, writing or through painting and how we translate this in a vision for the future. I invite you to read more about, about the Peter uh, photographs on the website, completed by the work of the Swiss artist Charlotte AED that unfortunately she's not present with us today. I really, really um, recommend to check the work of these two artists, then to go and have more details about the Spanish artist, Ivan Caceres, which is actually with us here today. Hello, Ivan, tell us a little bit about your work and your background. Hi, Mohamed. Thank you. So, well, yeah, uh, my name is Ivan Cáceres. I work uh, as a photographer, um, mm -hmm. also as a teacher at the university. So I'm teaching photography almost every day. Um, I just started uh, to study architecture uh, in 2005. And then for three years, then I quit because I, I realized that I didn't want to become an architect. I didn't like to calculate the structures, forces, and all this stuff. Uh, but I love image, I love architecture, I love mm -hmm. photography also. So I then, uh, then I decided to move to another city, to Valencia, here in Spain, and I studied fine arts. Then I moved to Berlin. I was living there for three years in Germany. Then I came back in 2016. And since then, I'm teaching photography at the university and also working as a photographer when I have yeah. free time. That is not so That explains common. why your photographs actually are in, in Morocco. They are also in, in Greece. They are all over. That's a great opportunity for all the photographers to work because they are not all the time stick to their studio but we will talk about mobility a little bit later. Yeah. So we go back to the magazine and tell us a little bit about your project. Yeah, this project is called The Great Green. The, many people told me that this is a strange name and I, I love that because it's an ancient name that the Egyptians gave to the Mediterranean Sea. So it was mm -hmm. something poetical to me, something interesting. So I decided to, put the, to, to choose this title for the project and it's, Basically, it's, a very, it's something very simple. So uh, I just started to, to make some trips and travel around the Mediterranean Sea as a regular uh, tourist many years ago. But it was the last year uh, in 2019 when I realized that some of the pictures share some, something in common, some compositions, uh, point of view, and, and so on. So I just decided the last year to, to build a project with, the, uh, with these pictures. So I guess it started, uh, the first picture is, for, is from 2013 or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it was the last year when I realized that it can be a project. So I, 
uh, building this project every year with a couple of travels and uh, I used to do, not this year because of the yeah. pandemic situation, you know, but uh, when I have time, the project is growing and growing and growing and it has no end, <laughs> not sure. today. Tell, tell us a little bit about your perception of this photograph <laughs> that is taken on, this has been taken on Marrakesh. So yeah. tell us a little bit about this geometry. Tell us a little bit about this simplicity at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit more. Uh, yeah, when, when I try to uh, take photos of space or place or something like that, I uh, usually I start taking photos like the third or fourth day after visiting the place because I, uh, I like to know the place, to walking around, just to, to feel the city, to feel the place. And then I just uh, choose some spots that are quite simple, like these pictures in, in the, the Foco in Marrakesh. So I just try to show the geometry, the forms. I don't want to be present as a, as a photographer, so I, I take uh, a position with some distance between the object and between the photograph. I just want to have a quick question yeah. to Natalia and Lorena just to create this connection. What do you think about this point of view? Like, what do you think about this distance between your objects? And what do you think? Because I think that Natalia, in my opinion, is totally different. I think she just really needs to be connected, really to be in. We will go back to, we will have a time to look to Natalia or Holly, we just give you like a hint right mm -hmm. now to her work. Quickly, I think she's more getting closer. We will go back to this. What do you think, Natalia, about that? Yeah, exactly. You're absolutely right. I do get very close to my subjects and I am very much involved in um, the photographic process. Even if yeah. um, I do not take um, and even if it's an image of, of an object or, or a street scene, mm. I, um, I am very much involved in the photograph. I am very much aware of my position and as a photographer and, you know, in this case, as an outsider. Um, yeah. So I think it's really interesting that you really take a step back and become this invisible figure that is only there to document. So okay. it's a really different way of working. Yes, and then when we talk about visible and visible, go back to, to Ivan Caceres as well, then mm -hmm. we can go here. So the next two photographs, a little bit about this Anthropocene, if I can say. Yeah. Um... These two pictures are completely different in different times. The, the right one in, in Marrakesh was taken in 2013 and the last one was the last summer in, in 2019. So yeah, uh, I identified some kind of strategy when I, was, when I started taking photos. So uh, after that, after realizing that I was building a real project, uh, I tried to uh, take new pictures with this kind of point of view. So. Uh, columns, some distance, geometry for me is uh, always very, very important. Uh, I don't want to show people in my pictures because uh, I think that uh, maybe uh, they can be a distraction to the viewers, you know. Uh, I like the architecture of the space talk by itself. Yes. Um, also, I like the, how different cultures in different times uh, built in a very similar way, you know, uh, in Morocco, in Greece, in Rome, in different countries around the Mediterranean, the solutions, uh, the architectural uh, solutions are quite similar in some, uh, sometimes. So uh, I like to uh, focus on that, to show the similarities between apparently different cultures. Um, maybe, I don't know, think that we are not so different. Sure, sure. I go back then to uh, Lorena as a um, photographer based in Barcelona. Now she is not talking a little bit about similarity. If I go back to this law of physics that is really uh, transgressive, let us uh, uh, know a little bit about yourself first and then tell us about this disturbing photography. 
Okay, well, my name is Lorena Ruiz Pellicero, and well, I'm from Barcelona, and I mainly use photography and also video art as mm -hmm. means of expression. And about my work, I can say that I like to narrate using objects, usually, since they allow me to play um, in a space between reality and fiction, yeah. in the world of double meanings and metaphors, and that's where I usually work. In this project, in a specific, new law specific, um, well, it's an ongoing project. And the aim is creating an imaginary world where things can happen differently. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine that um, suddenly the laws of the universe could change and how we can react to that. Or even in the last instance, how will the world change if we could create new laws? And that's the game I do with photography because actually you can create new that's the medium or that new realities. Yeah, that gives you this a new reality. So this work is actually um, in a progress. As a project, mm -hmm. this, this is in a progress. This morphography. This is just a little bit of uh, the the whole uh, project that we featured in the uh, magazine. I, I really like this work. It's, it's it's too simple and complex at the same time. I love. I love the photography when it deals with the architectures and uh, trans and transgressive flow. That I really love. I really love this uh, this work. So now we talked about architecture and how things progress from a civilization to another, from a law to another in the same way. And here we talk about how things can progress, but in a different way. We go with uh, Lorena to tell us a little bit about her secrets. No, hi. So I am a Mexican photographer who's right now based in London. I've just started my master uh, here in London, and I was previously study studying at the Cambridge School of Art. Um, I was living there for about four years just before coming. And my photography is all about the connection between people and their environments. I'm really interested in that relationship, the way they connect to their environments. I'm, I'm particularly um, interested in the, in the idea of home and the concept of home um, and sort of how that connects to our identity. Um, in this body of work, I, um, well, last year I had the opportunity to to go to to Lusaka to Zambia um, I was assisting another photographer in a workshop with other professional photographers um, however in the afternoons we had the chance to develop our own projects and I focused on the market street that's called um, Siguazi Road and I was really interested in the on the, on the market street because of the um, you know markets are in every city all around the yeah. world so I had never been to, to Africa before or Zambia. So at the same time, I, I was really aware of, of my position as an outsider. So it was really um, important to me to, to pay a lot of attention and, and a lot of care to ethics and, and consent. Um, so I, I photographed for about three hours every day in the afternoon going up and down the street. And I got to know people and I sort of established connections with them and, and I was sort of capturing the uniqueness of the street, you know, what stood out to me and what was, um, you know, very different to me. Mm -hmm. and, and I created this body of work that is called Sequazi Road. Amazing, I really like this word, it talked talk to me and some, somehow it's true that I have my background African and I really, I, I really connect to this work. And the way that I selected this work among other photographers, because it gives us general, like a general concept for my research as we talk right now, like law of physics and the universe, we talk about architecture and how human can evolve in all this. This is actually the vision that I create in the issue six and you artists completed all this by, uh, by your projects. Now uh, let's talk a little bit about the art community or the art scene. So Natalia, what, uh, what do you wish that the uh, public take from your work? For my work, I, I want them to, to be very open to a different narrative from um, Africa. So if, if they actually go into, into my um, website, they will see a larger body of work 
and, and they will see that it's actually part of, a, of an, like a bigger exhibition where I collaborated with these other Zambian photographers. Yes. And the whole idea is to little by little um, sort of provide a different narrative of, of Zambia because you know what's uh, portrayed um, or, or displayed in the media is not very accurate um, generally and there are um, certain connotations that uh, we wanted to to tackle and to somehow start changing uh, little by little. So um, yeah, I want I want people to sort of be open to to a different visual narrative from Zambia. Interpret. Good. What about you, Lorena? So, what is the most challenging part of creating your project? Well, the challenging part is always uh, finding the, the right place to take the picture for me because I imagine. Um, the picture and then in some cases it's easy because it's from somewhere around I can I can do it but for example in the basketball picture uh, it took me like a year I was like trying to find the right place for this and I didn't find it and finally I took this picture in Vietnam like traveling I found like the right place for, for it so usually uh, I take long time to take every picture until I find everything I need. That's for me the hardest part. Like I have the ideas, but sometimes I don't have the right space or time yes. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And then if we ask Ivan, so we can say, for me, like as he is in his own project. Well, so because your project is actually taken. Um, different places, you know, like in, in different con continents mm -hmm. and different countries. So what is the most challenging part in the COVID restrictions? Yeah, uh, now it's quite difficult to go on with this project, uh, but uh, this project has a part very important that is the documentation. Uh, so the, the information that I uh, have to um, to look for, to gather before I, I travel to some country. So now it, I'm on that phase, you know, on that uh, step in my project. So I'm reading a lot about Egypt, uh, about Turkey, because they're the, the next countries I want to visit. I um, preparing all the pictures I want to, to make there. I read a lot of information about, this, uh, about these countries, but now for the moment I cannot travel there, so yes. yeah, yeah. I that's know, the main, I know that's the main problem. Yeah, I know for for you photographers, especially today, like meeting with the three photographers, I know mobility for you is essential, is crucial. You really need to have that freedom to connect with the space. You need the uh, equation here and now to make it happen. Yeah. I really know it's very important for you. So what are the, the new things you are doing in order to achieve this uh, equation? What are you doing right now to keep creating? So I'm reading a lot, as, as yeah. I said, about the, the subjects I want to work in the future. Now I'm working on my PhD project. So mm -hmm. I'm reading a lot of books now and writing articles and all the stuff. So this year I'm focusing on, on, on that. Good. Natalia, anything you're doing exclusively yeah. for this period? Yeah, well, for me, um, I'm also sort of researching a lot and getting really informed uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm starting a new project now. And, you know, it's definitely challenging in these times, especially in a very busy city as London. Yes. Um, so what I do is take a lot of precautions, take my distance and, you know, be very meticulous with the way I'm working and assuring that um, every single thing I do, you know, I'm making it for a reason and I'm not just there potentially putting myself at risk and others at risk. Um, so I am working not normally, I would say semi-normally, I'm trying to adapt. I've definitely slowed down. Um, I've changed uh, some techniques. Um, so I'm, um, yeah, I'm, I'm slowing down and I'm also really careful with the way I work with people. What about you, Lorena? Well, in my case, very much yeah. Ivan and Natalia also taking more time for research and yeah, like organizing ideas. But also I'm I'm working in an art space 
in Barcelona, well near Barcelona. So I can still go there and still work inside, but um, like a studio close place. And I usually work outdoors. So that's also a challenge. And I try to, to still go out and, and make uh, my work there, but yeah, something has changed and it's more difficult to do it. Sure. I know that the sensation of every time there's a new issue of magazine, um, arrive to to our studio and we just like the sensation of touching it, seeing the, the result of these photographs. Me as, as a creator, it gives me this kind of positivity, like a wave of good energy. I guess for you photographers seeing your photographs printed is the best sensation that you can feel ever. So let's say today is a different type of exposure you know, for you as photographers. I know this is a magazine, it's amazing, it feels really great when you open the magazine, you see your photographs, but then the exposure today is different, it's digital. Actually, you are here, you know, this is your photographs. You, Ivan, you're actually, you are, you know, just in front of your subject, actually. You are the subject today, you know, and that yeah. gives you an exposure, in my opinion, as a creator, is the same as you are having an an online exhibition or a real exhibition right now, you know, just like people, they have a relaxing and chill time hearing you talking about your work, which is a new opportunity. What do you think about this digital version? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, it's the present, that's not the future anymore. Uh, so <laughs> uh, everybody is uh, is used to, is getting used to this, this kind of relation in the distance um, with uh, a laptop, a phone, so, with the technology deeply involved in how we show our artwork. So yeah, for me, it's not, it's not new, it's, it's something normal now. So uh, this kind of uh, talk uh, we have having now, I think is part of uh, artist's work. It's so sure. interesting, it's useful for showing our works. It's sometimes it's more important uh, that uh, a regular exhibition in the gallery or something like that. Yeah, you can reach more people sometimes. So for me, something quite normal. Yeah, no, it's definitely different. You know, um, I've, as Ivan was saying, like I'm also getting used to this digital contact even. Um, however, yeah, having physical prints and having, you know, the physicality of things um, has, uh, it does feel different. However, it, it does feel like, uh, I don't know that that we are very. It, it is the normal thing you, to do now, uh, and I think uh, in terms of accessibility, it has. It, it's an entire discussion. Uh, it can we like sure, yeah. this digital and like the fact that we're live streaming on Facebook. Um, it means that it has an outstanding reach, and anyone can really see this. Whereas when it's all physical, it's really you know it's relocated really in that in that time and space and. You know, when it's over, it's over. Whereas with gonna, this digital version, it's going to be up in the internet and it's going to be accessible and reachable again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, I, it's different, uh, yeah. For me as a creator, what I like about this is um, that opportunity gives to, to the artist the world, like a word to talk, like possibility to talk. And usually I, as a creator, I sometimes really like the work and then I talk to the artist and miss that confuse the work because the artists usually most of them they don't have words to describe their work you know because simply they just didn't practice it enough they didn't talk enough about their work or sometimes they prefer to not talk about the work you know but articulate the work is actually complete in it as a creator you know I think that's the opportunity that now artists they have that they can talk they can progress they are let's say like they can practice their public speaking uh, you know, toward their work and how to make it accessible, easy, and a brief, like short, brief description about a, a complex uh, feeling and research and production. What do you think, Lorena? You are specialist on transgression the laws. Well, I agree. Like, I think like this is a new way of communicating, and it's gonna be at least for a while, like the normal thing to do. And, and I think it's, it's better to get to more people even if you can't be there sometimes. 
even if we lack those many sensations and feelings of being an exhibit in a, in a physical exhibition and, sure. and seeing the picture in real life. But, well, I think we can just um, see the positive side right yeah. now. Well, we, will, we are getting to the end of this fourth episode dedicated to photography. Before we leave, this screen would say, uh, I, I want to ask you, as photographers, what advice would you give to photographers who would follow your path or to work with the same theme as you presented in the magazine? So, um, yeah, uh, my main advice to students or people who are uh, starting to get involved in art is uh, practicing art is not uh, only painting, uh, it's not only taking photos, it's not only making sculptures, videos or whatever. Uh, I know art is something uh, more deep, it's something that you have to live every day, you have to read about art, you have to read Altiva 9 of course, and all that kind of uh, of these uh, specialized magazines, books, uh, visiting exhibitions, it's really important to go to see exhibitions, to write down the name of the artist you discover every day. So that's, that it's, oh, that's the yeah, subject, right. you know. So live the art every day, every hour. Good. Yeah, no, I agree that, um, you know, you have to research a lot and to really know what it is that you want to talk about. And I think it's really important that when you actually do talk about uh, the work that you're doing to make sure that the words that you're saying actually reflect on the work. Otherwise, that this connection is really going to um, bring down the level of the work and it's going to not stand out because of that. So I would advise people to be very um, intentional with, with what they're saying and what they're presenting. Well, if I can say something, it's just like, uh, being an artist or trying to be it's a full-time job forever, so congratulations. <laughs> but um, yeah, yes, being all the time there and taking, using the most of the time, you can be thinking in what are you doing in many ways, not just producing, but also thinking and thinking before and after. Thank you very much for your time. For, uh, for your words, for presenting your work, for being part of this uh, issue six. I wouldn't be successful without you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for following this, uh, this live talk and definitely I uh, will see you soon. Thank you very much, Thank you very uh, much. for including our work in the magazine and for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.